This video is called The Mechanics of Global Climate Change and it is part of the expansion pack to the video How It All Ends. In this video, we'll take a little bit of a look at how the greenhouse effect works, how that turns into global warming, and how that turns into global climate change because in order to understand the, um, a lot of the questions and issues around the topic, it's really useful to look at the basics of the dynamics. Uh, I'm going to simplify a lot. You should always do some Googling and find out stuff out, out there on your own. Don't believe what I say. Um, I can recommend the grist.com how to talk to a climate skeptic website. It's very thorough in terms of um, uh, common misconceptions or holes in people's understanding about how this works. But you don't have to use that. Use your own thing. Just remember to evaluate your sources according to the credibility. I would recommend the credibility spectrum that we talked about in my risk assessment video. Okay, greenhouse effect. Let's take a look at that. Here's the Earth. Here's a nice layer of atmosphere. Here's Mr. Sun. Mr. Sun sends down the light rays that come in and hit our Earth. They warm it up, which is a good thing. Our Earth radiates a bunch of that back out, and as it goes out, some of it escapes the atmosphere and goes into space, and some of it bounces back to the Earth and gets trapped there. You've probably seen this diagram a lot. This is a good thing. Without this, without the atmosphere, we would be bloody hot on sunny on, uh, during the day and totally freezing at night. It'd be like the moon. This modulates the temperature. It's a good thing. This is called the greenhouse effect, and it is due to the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane and water. These are the molecules that make up part of our atmosphere that do this job, that trap the heat. So when you hear about greenhouse gases, or GHGs, what we're talking about is the gases in our atmosphere that actually do this bit. Most of our atmosphere, about 80% of it, is actually nitrogen, which doesn't do a very good job of this. So it's actually a very tiny percentage of the atmosphere that actually does this trick right here. In fact, it's uh, less than 1% of the atmosphere actually is greenhouse gases. Most of the atmosphere is nitrogen and oxygen, neither of which is a strong greenhouse gas. Okay, so what happens if we change the concentrations, which has happened throughout the history of the Earth? That changes the proportion of this reflected sunlight that escapes the atmosphere and is radiated back out into space. So let's say we increase some greenhouse gases. That means more of this energy is trapped back at the Earth and less of it escapes to space, which means that the total amount of energy in the Earth goes up, which raises the temperature until it gets warm enough that the amount going back out increases enough so that it is once again equal to the amount coming in and the temperature levels off. That's called equilibrium. And every time the concentration of these changes, our total temperature goes up or down until equilibrium is restored. And just like a bucket with a hole in the bottom, if you pour water in just as fast as the water is coming out, the total water level stays the same. That's the greenhouse effect. Global warming means that we change the concentration of greenhouse gases so that the equilibrium shifts and the total amount of energy in the Earth goes up, so temperatures go up. That's global warming. Global climate change is an effect of global warming. Global climate change is all the things that happen as a result of the extra energy that gets trapped in the Earth. For more specifics on that, you'll see the video Scare Tactics, uh, which talks more specifically about all the different changes in the climate that come from this warming. So greenhouse effect is trapping the, Earth's, or the sun's energy in the Earth with greenhouse gases. Global warming is when you change the concentration, or something changes the concentration of the greenhouse gases, which changes how much energy is kept, which changes the temperature. That's global warming. Sometimes you'll hear the objection, how can carbon dioxide be such a big deal? It's just a tiny part of the atmosphere. Well, let's take a look at the composition of the atmosphere. Most of it is nitrogen. In fact, about 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, which is not a greenhouse gas. Another 21% is oxygen, which is good for us. We breathe that. Now, you'll notice those two numbers total up to 99%. So 99% of the atmosphere already, this stuff that you feel against your palms when you do this, thin as air, 99% of it is not greenhouse gases. The next most uh, common one, argon, at about 0.9%. So there, in our first three, that's 99.9% .9 of the atmosphere, not greenhouse gases. So a little bit of greenhouse gas goes a long way in the greenhouse effect. Then after this is water, which is a greenhouse gas, with a very, quite variable composition, and then carbon dioxide at about 0.04%. Now here's kind of an interesting thing. When I first started learning about this, 
years ago as a science teacher in the textbooks, this was listed at 0.03%. And just in the time since I've been uh, uh, teaching science, this number has changed in the textbooks because of the carbon dioxide in the air. So this is carbon dioxide is very tiny. It's only the fifth most common uh, gas in the atmosphere, but it is huge in terms of climate effect. Why, you say, when water vapor actually makes up more, a little bit, it's variable, but a little bit less than 1%, water vapor makes up more of the greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide. And in fact, you'll hear that methane, CH4, molecule per molecule, methane is a stronger greenhouse gas, so one molecule of methane will do more in terms of trapping the, earth, the uh, sun's energy on the earth than one molecule of carbon dioxide. So what's the big deal with carbon dioxide? Well, the big deal with carbon dioxide is it's the one we're monkeying with. This we can't do anything about, that's part of an equilibrium that we take no part in. This we are emitting, but the amount of this is really tiny compared to the amount of this. This, the amount that we're putting out, is actually quite significant. So let's take a look at that and see how that plays in the whole thing. All right, I hope you'll forgive the uh, really basic graphics, but we can get the point across here. We got ocean, we got land, we got air up here. In the air, we got carbon dioxide. And over here, we got trees. And trees, love them or log them, do a really cool trick. What they do is they take carbon dioxide that's in the air, they take it in and they split it so that they keep the carbon to make the branches and the leaves and the bark, all the cellulose, sugars, apples, food. They take the carbon from the air, put that into their structure, and then spit out the oxygen as their waste product. So we breathe this and we eat and build with this. It's a pretty slick trick. Over time, these die, they get buried, all this carbon ends up down here. Now what happens down here is a pretty cool trick. Just like taking apart your Lego T-Rex and making it into a Lego hot rod, this carbon gets taken apart and instead of being a tree, it gets re-put, gets put back together and turned into something else. In this case, it turned into coal. And over here, where we have a bunch of little beasties in the water, in the ocean called phytoplankton, they're essentially plants, they do the same thing. They take carbon dioxide from the air, split it, spit out the oxygen, keep the carbon for themselves into their bodies. When they die, they sink to the bottom, end up down here. Over hundreds of millions of years, they get compressed, chemically changed, taken apart, put back together. This carbon gets rearranged and turned into oil or petroleum. So along we come. We dig this stuff up over here, and it's a very slick trick because what we do is we take this carbon from these fossil fuels and we put it into our cars, our very highly designed specialized cars. We put the carbon in there. We take oxygen from the atmosphere. We combine those two releasing energy. We use that energy to run our car and we spit out the waste product. And guess what the waste product is? What do you get when you combine carbon with oxygen? You get CO2, which is the exact same thing we started with over here. It's a very cool thing. It's a very slick trick. The killer is the time scale, though, because this process of taking carbon dioxide, splitting it, spitting out the oxygen, burying the carbon, this takes hundreds of millions of years. So these fossil fuels that you're burning today and that we're burning and that I'm burning for these lights were formed over about the last 300 million years. This process over here, where we're taking that carbon out, recombining it with oxygen, putting it back in the air where it started, well, we're doing this in about 200 years. That's about the entire age of the industrial, the, the, the length of the industrial age in terms of our fossil fuel economy. That is pretty significant. If we wanted to do a timeline for that, and we wanted to say do a timeline on the board and say that, okay, the age, the fossil fuel age is going to be as wide as this line. How far over would I have to put the start of this 300 million year cycle in which the fossil fuels were created out of air? Over here? Over here? How about...